Hi friends, welcome back. Nick and Taylor here today to tell you that November is National Family Literacy Month. Taylor and myself and a few of our other friends here at the aquarium are going to be reading sections from some of our favorite books to inspire all of you to do some reading with your family and friends and hopefully learn more about our blue planet and how to protect it. We hope you enjoy. Hi, my name is Jordan Baker and I'm a querist in the galleries here. It is actually Family Literacy Month, National Family Literacy Month. Um, and I chose the book Cod by Mark Kurlansky to share with you all. Um, and it's very relevant to our Sandy Bottom community tank, which exhibits a number of gadiforms, um, including haddock and Atlantic cod, and other game fishes like halibut and striped bass. Um, I chose this book because it's very um, interesting to the biography of the Atlantic cod fishery, and I think it's important to share that story with very many communities. So I wanted to share a small excerpt from the book just because it's very interesting to me. Um, so this describes the difference between haddock and cod in colonial times. The smaller haddock has a similar form but is charcoal colored on the back where the cod is spotted brown and amber. It also has a black spot on both sides above the pectoral fin. The stripe on a haddock is black instead of white. In New England, there is a traditional explanation for this difference. There, cod is sometimes referred to as the sacred cod. In truth, this is because it has earned New Englanders so many sacred dollars. But according to New England folklore, it was the fish that Christ multiplied to feed the masses. In the legend, Satan tried to do the same thing, but since his hands were burning hot, the fish wriggled away. The burn mark of Satan's thumb and forefinger left black stripes, hence the haddock. I find that piece very interesting just because of the um, way New England was founded and the way it progressed into a fishery for communities along the coast. And I think it really speaks to the hundreds of years of cod fishing that occurred and how overfishing eventually in the later 20th century can really impact uh, hundreds of years of history in an animal. Hi friends, Nick here. For National Family Literacy Month, I'm going to be reading a short passage from a book titled Tuna, A Love Story by Richard Ellis. I like this book because tuna are a very important fish both in our oceans but also for humans as well. A lot of people make their living fishing for fish species like tuna. And it's one of the most popular types of seafood that we eat, not only just in the US, but all around the globe. So it's important to learn more about tuna and how to protect them. And I'm gonna read a short passage that has a very vivid description of what tuna is and what it's all about, what it looks like. So here we go, you ready? What exactly is a tuna? It is a fast moving marine fish, plump in the middle and pointed at both ends, rather like an elongated American football with a sweet of fins, dorsal, second dorsal, pelvic, anal, pectoral, found in most bony fishes, and little finlets aft of the second dorsal and the anal fin. The tail fin, also known as the caudal fin, is heterocircle, equal lobed, and is characteristically crescent shaped or lunate. On either side, of the base of the tail, tuna have one or two horizontal keels, as do the billfishes. Tuna are usually dark above and light below, with a color scheme of blue, green, and silver that befits their characterization as fighter jets of the sea. What do you guys think? Pretty good, huh? Hi, I'm Jeremy Broad. I'm uh, one of the aquarists here in the Temper Gallery at the aquarium. And um, I'm going to uh, read one of my favorite books here uh, called Sea Dragon Sea. And I'm uh, right here in front of our Sea Dragon exhibit. And uh, this is a special book to me. I actually got this about 10 years ago in Australia 
when I was there uh, doing some diving and uh, doing some pictures and videography of sea dragons in the wild. So let's begin. Sea Dragon Sea by Margaret Sperling, illustrated by Danny Snell. Down in the sea where the sponge gardens grow and the water is cold and deep, ten baby sea dragons hatched out of their eggs. But almost as soon as they uncurled their tails, the babies knew that this was not their real home. And so they set out for the place that all sea dragons know, where the water is warm and the sea grasses grow. And it, it was a dangerous time for the little sea dragons, who were all alone. At first they swam slowly, rocking backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Then they swam faster and faster. All except for one baby sea dragon who was left far behind. Two sea slugs looked up from their leisurely breakfast. Good morning, said the baby sea dragon. I'm looking for the beautiful seagrass meadow. It is my home. Your brothers and sisters have just swum past, they said helpfully. With a wave of his tail, he swam bravely on. Three e eerie eagle rays cruised by. Go towards the reef, they whispered, but watch out for that woebegone that waits in the gloom. The little sea dragon entered the reef. The woebegone opened a sleepy eye. Baby sea dragon didn't stop. He wiggled his tail and swam as fast as he could to the middle of the reef. Four friendly cuttlefish were playing among the rocks and corals. Good morning, said the baby sea dragon. I am looking for the beautiful seagrass meadow. It is my home. The meadow is closer to shore, they said cheerfully. Stay and have fun with us for a while. No, thank you, said the baby sea dragon, and he swam over the rocks to the other side of the reef. Five flying fish knew where to go. Follow us, they said. We will take you part of the way. Six dashing dolphins came to give, give advice. We have been to the beautiful seagrass meadow. It's not far, they sang. So the sea dragon kept swimming, rocking backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Then, feeling very tired, he drifted down, down, down to the bottom of the sea. Seven splendid sea stars felt sorry for the little sea dragon. You are almost there, don't give up, they murmured. So with a little shake of his tail, he swam on. Eight weary weed fish darted by. The smallest one, mistaking the sea dragon for seaweed, tried to shelter behind his fronds. Good evening, said the baby sea dragon. I am looking for the beautiful seagrass meadow. It is my home. The weed fish was surprised. It's just over there, she said. And with a flick of her fins, she swam hurriedly away. And so it was. Nine sleepy seahorses were anchored safely for the night. This is my home, said the baby sea dragon softly. It is, said the seahorses. This is where all sea dragons live. The baby sea dragon was so happy that he twisted and twirled up and over, around and under. Then slowly and dreamily, the little sea dragon drifted among the swaying plants of the beautiful seagrass meadow. He drifted over seaweeds that were pink, like lace. He drifted under seaweeds that were brown little fronds, just like baby sea dragons. They were sea dragons. The 10 baby sea dragons had all found their home. exhibit I am going to talk about another tentacled cousin of the octopus this morning in one of my favorite books called I'm the biggest thing in the ocean by Kevin Sherry I am a giant squid and I'm big 
I'm bigger than these shrimp. I'm bigger than these clams. I'm bigger than this crab. I'm bigger than that jellyfish. I'm bigger than these turtles. I'm even bigger than this octopus. I'm bigger than this shark. Shh. I'm bigger than this fish. And that fish, that fish, this fish. I'm the biggest thing in the ocean. and hopefully now it's one of yours too. Thank you for reading with us today. We hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about some of our favorite books about the ocean. And now we encourage you to go home and find your favorite books about the ocean as well. Happy National Family Literacy Month, friends.